The XPS of insulators represents a problem that must be solved in that electrons that are emitted from the surface represent negative charges and as a result of having an insulating material a positive charge will build up on the surface and the positive charge attracts the electrons back towards the surface. This means that electrons would have a different kinetic energy depending on the charge that has accumulated on the surface. Peaks would shift in binding energy. In order to measure from an insulating material we have to provide some compensation mechanism where electrons and also potentially positive charge is returned to the surface in order to maintain a balanced charge at the surface during the acquisition of a spectrum. Now these spectra have been measured using different charge compensation states and you can see simply by looking down this list here that the position for this sulfur 2p peak is changing with each different setting for the charge compensation. In order to do an analysis for data such as these the software needs to be able to do charge correction that is to say we need to shift peaks a known amount that is representative of the charge state that was established for the surface by the charge compensation and this video is going to look at the calibration property page of CASA XBS and how these features are used to charge correct spectra so an analysis can proceed. We'll now illustrate how this calibration property page works in the most basic form. In order to do this we'll load the data file that corresponds to these spectra that you see in this image and these are a set of sulfur 2p spectra that were measured from the same sample using different charge compensation conditions and the different charge compensation has resulted in shifts in these peaks. So let's select one and perform charge correction based on the spectrum in the active tile and using the apply button. Now we already have on these data a region and we also have components so when we perform the compensation in other words when we shift the binding energy scale we have an option that lets us shift the regions or components or we can not shift the regions and components and this gives some flexibility when applying charge correction so that you can move data relative to components and I'll illustrate how that is useful in another video. Once this region is selected then there's a button here that will allow us to pull in information from that region that is to say the selected region if there were more than one region on these data then the selected one would be the one that is acted on by this regions button and the value has come in from the region the true value has come in from the information gathered from the element library based on the name field in this region that was selected so we have a true and a measured value that are ended here on the calibration property page. We've got the regions and components ticked because we want these to shift at the same time and then it's just a question of saying apply and the apply button is going to act on the active spectrum in the active tile only. And When I press apply you can see that this table which is a regions table indicates the position of the region and it now matches the true value. This second table is gathered from the components and these components have peak positions that are slightly different on the basis that this is the peak position of a component peak fitted to these data whereas this one, the regions table, is gathering information from the data itself and it's calculated a, a position of the peak maximum. So if we wanted to alternatively do the same procedure but this time use the components we would select the component and this is the three halves peak from the sulfur 2p doublet and once again I go here and I can say component and this time it's brought in the component position not the region position because I selected the component button and it's again based on the selected component the true value is once again 164 and we're going to shift regions and components 
and we're going to do the apply button so that only the active VAMAS block in the active tile will be processed. So now you can see that the peak position for the three halves peak is now agreeing with the true value and as a consequence the region position has now moved by a, a corresponding offset between the region and the component. And if we look at the processing history you can see that there are two instructions now indicating that there was a, an initial calibration based on a region where we shifted regions and components and a second one was performed on the basis of a shift calculated based on these components. These measurements were performed to illustrate that a charge compensation state can alter the position for a peak. More typically, a measurement is performed using similar charge compensation states. However, the material itself can cause a different response and therefore peaks shift in slightly different ways depending on the material. However, when we have a charge compensation active, we presume that each one of these high resolution spectra that were measured sequentially will have the same compensation state so we should shift them by the same amount. This measurement in particular has measured the carbon 1s twice to verify that after a sequence of measurements the two carbon 1s spectra that ought to be the same are indeed the same and that's what we see. So this is designed to ensure that the measurement was stable in terms of charge compensation and other possible influences of the x-rays on the material itself but nevertheless you can see that the charge compensation has remained constant over the sequence of these measurements by virtue of measuring this carbon 1s twice. So we'll start off by looking at one of these carbon 1s and then using the calibration property page we're now going to correct the offset for this carbon 1s assuming a true value of 285 and we use a measured interval which is indicated by drawing out a box and it fills in on the measured value two binding edges that correspond to the start and the end of this box and this will give us a range over which the maximum value can be calculated and therefore the measured value is coming from the data the true value is just the value that was entered at 285 and then if we select these three spectra here and in fact we'll do the same for the fourth one here because these are all effectively measured at the same time then we can say apply to selection we have no regions and no components defined so in this case we don't need to tick those boxes and we just say apply to the selection the selection is this selection in the right hand side and all of these now receive an instruction that is based on the calculation that's performed on the C1S that's displayed in the active tile and then we have corresponding commands that indicate the measured that was calculated from the carbon and the actual that was entered on the window and it says that it's from VB equals 1 so this is VAMAS block index 1 where the calculation was performed and has been used in the oxygen and also the nitrogen. One of the advantages of a range calibration is that having defined a range and a true value then we can apply this again to other files if they have similar structure. So I'll tile what's already open and I have four files open, one of which contains the data set that has already been calibrated. But we have others that have a similar requirement. So if I look at this data set here and look at the calibration property page, I've already got set up an interval and a true value and assuming that the maximum for this carbon appears within this range and it does look like it does then if I now select these data and say apply to selection then I've now got another file that has got a calibration 
that is based on the previously defined range calibration that was performed on this first file. So for example, let's illustrate that this has worked by selecting these and copying these to a new file. So we should see that when we overlay these two sets of data that they have been shifted by the appropriate amount so that the peaks now line up. Let's have a look at the oxygen and also the nitrogen. And if I range normalize you can see that the calibration from the carbon has done reasonably well for these nitrogen peaks. They look about a shift that would make sense for the nitrogen and similarly we can see that the the oxygen look very similar. So the range calibration has been applied to two different files and it has performed reasonably well.